Hey everyone, welcome to Leg Curry Church at Home this week. Uh, we really miss you all, um, but we hope that this service will be a real blessing to you and that you'll get to worship God together in your homes. Enjoy. And thanks to the Hazard family, Richard, Sarah, Isla, Jonah and Felicity, who will be taking part in our service today, uh, along with our assistant, Philip, and also my wife, Anne. For Lego Curry folks, the June news sheet will be out this week, so uh, do take note of everything that's in there and take it on board. If you don't receive a copy, then please let Helen know. Uh, it should come out by email or by post. So do let Helen know if you don't receive a copy. Today is Pentecost Sunday and we come to think about God the Holy Spirit. And as we enter into worship we begin with some words of promise that Jesus made to his disciples who were physically with him then but to the disciples of all ages. The words come from John chapter 14 uh, beginning to read at verse 15. And these are the words inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Amen. Richard Hazard is one of our elders at Lega Curry, and Richard's going to share with us now something of how God has been encouraging him through this period of lockdown. Richard. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Rick Hazard, for those of you who don't know me, and I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes chatting to you about how things have been uh, with us over the past few weeks and how God has been encouraging me. First of all, though, just want to say how much we're missing you all. Uh, it's definitely been tough not going to church on Sunday and, and catching up with you all over tea and coffee and seeing you all during the, the events that go on during the week. Um, so we're really looking forward to getting back together with you when uh, it's safe to do so. So, yeah, a little bit about us. Our, as you saw from the start, we have a, a young family with three kids. So our weekdays certainly continue to be busy. Uh, Sarah and I are both working from home and the kids uh, are being homeschooled. And so we've built up a really good routine about what um, the weekdays look like and that has been keeping us, us busy in that. Um, we homeschooling is maybe a bit of a stretch, mainly Sarah. Sarah is, I'm so grateful that Sarah's a teacher. She's been fantastic and has much more patience than I do. Um, I've just been chipping in where I can. I'm doing as much as I can, but uh, to be honest, probably doing more harm than good. So hopefully the kids are resilient enough to get through that. Uh, other than that, we've really just been focused on building as many memories as we can with the kids through this. Uh, obviously, it's going to be, uh, when we look back on it, we'll think back into the tough times. But also, I'm keen that the kids look back with some fondness over this and have some good memories about what went on. Um, for example, Jonah had a, a birthday party um, while we've been in lockdown. And so we put a tent up outside and we did a bit of a camping holiday, lit a fire, stayed out. Um, and so that was fantastic and he really loved it and obviously he can't spend it with his friends so it was nice to be able to do that. Other than that things like what you've probably all been doing, board games and computer games, plenty of Mario Kart and building a little bit of competition around all that's been great. Uh, and our youngest Felicity obviously absolutely loves it because mummy and daddy are here all the time and she gets us all the time so that's been great. Um, and that's definitely the big positive to come out of this that I've been focused on is how much family time we've had together. I'm not traveling as much with work and uh, the things that would take us out of the house during the week don't exist. And so therefore, we really have been spending lots of time together in a family as a family. And that's been brilliant. And we feel incredibly fortunate to have the family that we do and the time that we have together. Um, but the flip side on that is that I've been thinking a lot about why, you know, why we are so fortunate. 
um, when you look out there and see the amount of pain that's going on with this and also the injustice that is really brought to the fore the big gaps between rich and poor not just in our society but also in the world um, because of this it's it's been tough to, to read and it's been tough to process I have to say and so I've been thinking an awful lot about my faith and I've been reading a lot about faith um, and I, you know what God has really encouraged me with is is because of my faith I can rely on him uh, because I know he's in control of all of this and I know that he knows how this turns out and he knows as well what our future is and so I can rely on him and and we as a home group remotely have been studying Daniel, uh, which has been perfect because it's all about these guys who are in a really difficult circumstance and that their faith prevails. And the last time we met, we looked at chapter three with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refusing to pray and worship this 90 foot statue that Nebuchadnezzar builds for himself. And when they're being thrown into the fiery furnace, they say, look, our God, we have faith that our God can rescue us from this. But if he doesn't, our faith will will prevail and that has been a real encouragement to me that no matter what's going on out there my faith in God as the creator and as my saviour still exists and also thinking a lot about my salvation I've been reading a book by John Stott and he describes salvation in two parts uh, firstly our forgiveness which eradicates our past and also the spirit which transforms our future and that kind of works well with today being Pentecost Sunday and, and kind of reflects what Peter says in his sermon uh, on Pentecost, um, that our future is transformed by the Holy Spirit. And so that has been incredibly encouraging, encouraging to me, knowing that the Spirit is within me, that he strengthens me. Um, and not only that he strengthens me, but he gives me that great hope of our future, that our future is secure, that what and how far we have come from creation, where everything was very good, to this place that uh, isn't and is, is full of, of pain and injustice. Our future and our hope is secured and it was secured by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that has, has really stuck with me. And maybe like yourself, you've been going through massive peaks and troughs through all of this, but I keep coming back to that massive peak that no matter what, that our hope is in the future, which is secured and was secured by Jesus Christ that one day we all will be together again uh, in in the new creation, in the new earth. Uh, and I, I can't wait because we'll get to worship our Saviour every day and we'll get to live in a, a place that has been promised to us. So that has really given me hope, uh, more so than ever. And I, and I can't wait. And I'm so pleased that that's the hope that I have uh, through Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, oh.
Last Saturday evening was Eid al-Fitr, probably pronounced wrongly, uh, which is the celebration that marks the end of the Muslim fast month of Ramadan. Uh, it's tough fasting from dawn to dusk every day for a month, but with uh, discipline and effort, there are many Muslims throughout the world who do it each year, uh, as they also seek to fulfil the five, the other five pillars of Islam, the profession of faith, which is a statement of their belief in Allah and Muhammad as a prophet of Allah, uh, prayers, which are supposed to said the ritual set prayers, which are meant to be said five times a day, uh, giving of alms or, or taxes to benefit the poor and the needy, uh, fasting at Ramadan, and then the last one is Hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca. But who can fulfil the three great demands of the Christian faith? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your soul. To love your neighbour as yourself. And to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that Jesus has commanded. You know, whatever effort uh, and discipline we can, uh, we can summon up and exert, we simply can't do these things. We can't love the Lord with all our heart and soul and mind. We can't love our neighbour as much as we love ourselves. How on earth can we do this? Frightened. Anxious disciples sat in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. It was uh, the Jewish day of Pentecost. And then suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the house where they, the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You see, folks, one of the great differences between Christianity and every other religion in the world is that Christians are not working and seeking to be disciplined and put in effort to try to be accepted by God because we can never do that. That's an impossibility. We can't do it by our own efforts. It's impossible. But rather we are accepted by God through, through grace by faith in Jesus Christ alone. As we submit to Jesus Christ in repentance and faith and we are baptised in the Holy Spirit, the very life of God, the Holy Spirit, comes to live within us, to make us dwelling within us. And that's what enables us to love God with heart, soul, mind and strength to love our neighbour as ourselves and to love the world so much that we will reach out to others with the gospel of Christ, to go make disciples of all nations. It's not possible for us, but it is possible for God the Holy Spirit who works within us. And so it's important, it's crucial for us to understand who the Holy Spirit is and to understand what he does and that's what we're going to come back to to look at later on in the service today. So uh, we're going to now have a, a prayer for Pentecost, uh, which Anna and myself are going to lead. And then after that, Isla Hazard is going to come and read the scriptures for us again from John chapter 16. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we see something of your majesty in the grandeur of snow-capped mountains and pine forests. The mountains speak to us of your consistency. The sea cliffs speak of order, the God who is able to say this far and no farther. On this Pentecost Sunday, we give thanks, Father and Son, that you sent us your spirit. In the gentleness of a flower petal, we see something of his beauty. He shapes and moulds us into your likeness so that we bear something of the many coloured aspects of your character. He lavishes on us a variety of gifts with which to serve your church. The sheer variety of creation speaks to us that we too are all different, yet through union with Christ we are all one. 
Holy Spirit, we praise you that you are the power for our living. Without you, we can never come to Christ. You alone are able to apply to us the power of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Only through you, Holy Spirit, can we live for Christ. We give thanks that you invite us to walk beside quiet waters. You restore the soul and invite us to be still and know that you are God. In power and stillness, may we know you more fully as you make yourself more fully known. In the darkest of times, when the light of God seems far away, we praise you that you are the one who breaks through. You hold a candle in our darkness and you will never leave or forsake us for you are faithful. Even when the light within us seems like darkness, you shine the light of Christ through the walls of our resistance and draw us back to him. Holy Spirit, where can we run from your presence? Whether we are at home or far away, whether in the city or the country, from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, you are there and your right hand holds us fast. We praise you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us in the family and in the family of faith. You're always working for the unity and fellowship of Christ's church, wherever we are from, whatever tribe or language or people. You unite us in friendship and in fellowship. One church, one cross, one truth. We worship you today, our Heavenly Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit, our high tower and our only hope. Let the name of Christ Jesus be glorified in us today and in all the earth. Amen. Our reading today is John chapter 16, verses 5 to 16. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer, and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. But now over to Philip. Boys and girls, it's birthday blessings time again, and this week we want to say a big happy birthday to Tom, who was one this week. I'm sure that was not the first birthday that everybody expected for Tom, but hopefully you had a great day celebrating as a family. Let's pray together for Tom. Father God, we continue to give thanks that you have made us a part of your church family, that we do not have to live our Christian lives on our own, but that we do it together. Father, we thank you for Tom, and we thank you that you have given him as a part of our church family. We thank you for the past year, for the blessing he has been, and we thank you for the strength that he has. We pray that you will continue to strengthen him, to uphold him, and to grow him into a young man who knows and who loves you. Keep him safe, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, if you have a birthday coming up, make sure somebody in your house lets Bobby know so that we can celebrate with you. Now Sarah's going to come and share a story with the boys and girls. Hi boys and girls. I wonder if anyone watching has ever done anything wrong. How many of us have felt sorry about it? How many of us have ever been brave when we could have been afraid? 
how many of us need help when making decisions? Well, if you've answered yes to any of my questions, you may have had a little help from the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm sure you may be wondering a little bit about this Holy Spirit. Well, in the Bible, it says this, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. So who is this helper? Well, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is like an invisible part of God that lives right inside us and helps us live the life that Jesus wants us to live. We can't see him, but he is in us. He stays with us always. When we need help to obey God, the Holy Spirit is there. And to help us understand this a little bit more, I have a few things I want to show you. So the first thing is this, a compass. Some of you might have used a compass before, especially if your family loved going for long walks in the mountain. Well, what does a compass do? A compass points us in the right direction. It stops us from getting lost. And in this same way, the Holy Spirit is constantly pointing us in the right direction, helping us with what to do, what to say, and may even caution and warn us. Okay, my next thing are these plasters. You might like to get one of these when you've had a bad fall. The plaster covers the scrape and it protects it from getting dirty. And likewise, the Holy Spirit wants to protect you. Sometimes he's maybe warning of danger or maybe protecting you when you're about to do something wrong. Up next, I have this. Now, this is one of Jonah's spellings books that he got from his teacher at the end of school. And I know your mums and dads are doing an amazing job right now of being your teacher. But I'm pretty sure you must be missing your school teachers too. And I, I know I'm really missing Isla and Jonah's teachers. Well, the Holy Spirit is like a teacher by your side. He will teach you about God whilst you read your Bible. Sometimes we can find things in the Bible a little bit difficult to understand. And the Holy Spirit can help to explain these things. Okay, my fourth items are these. So a blanket and a teddy. You might have a favourite one of these, one that you like to cuddle up with at night. Well, the blanket can keep you warm and this sometimes the teddy makes you feel a wee bit better if you're sad. And the Holy Spirit is often called a comforter too. He's always there to lend us comfort in time of need. So anytime we can pray and we can ask God to send the Holy Spirit to help us. And finally, my last thing I want to show you is this, a torch. A torch lights up the way in the dark. And in order for my torch to work, it needs some batteries inside it. So without the batteries inside the torch, it just doesn't work. And these batteries remind me of the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, we can have a power within us that will guide us in life, just like the batteries give power to the torch. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit. It says in Matthew chapter 5, In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. So, as the battery gives power to make the torch shine, the Holy Spirit gives power to believers to shine the light of Jesus. So, boys and girls, those five things can help us remember what the Holy Spirit does for us. That the Holy Spirit can be our guide, our protector, our comforter, our teacher, and give us the power to shine the light of Jesus. Well, when we decide to follow Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit comes into our life. We can't see him, but we know that he is there because we can feel his power and see him working in our life. Let's pray, boys and girls. Dear God, thank you that you've sent us the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that the Holy Spirit will give us the power to live for Jesus and let his light shine in our lives. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. 
we're now going to sing your song, City on a Hill. Our family are going to stand up and do the actions and we really hope you guys all join in too. Thanks, Sarah, for that uh, children's talk. And isn't it great seeing uh, the children, the young folk doing the actions uh, for the, the song as well? So let's uh, come and look a wee bit more at uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is the, the Cinderella of the Trinity. Uh, we think much of God the Father and God the Son, but the Holy Spirit doesn't get to go to the ball. So let's look at who this Holy Spirit is. And the first thing we want to know about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is a person. He is a person. We must never think of the Holy Spirit as an it. We should never, we should never refer to the Holy Spirit as an it. Uh, he is a person. Uh, and we should always refer to him as a person, the third person in the Godhead and the Trinity. And neither is he uh, some kind of mystical force. You know, you know some people at times have used the... Uh, the idea of the force from Star Wars to think about the, the Holy Spirit. This nebulous force that fills the universe. And if you can tap into the force, this power, then you can do all manner of wonderful things. May the force be with you, uh, as it says in Star Wars. But that is not like the Holy Spirit at all. We must never see the Holy Spirit or think of him as, a, as some kind of nebulous force that if we can just draw on his power. He is the third person of the Trinity, with the Father and with the Son. And we know this from the Scriptures uh, in various ways. Let me just mention two of them. First of all, uh, he acts in a personal way. In John 14, uh, we are reading there, it speaks of the Holy Spirit as a comforter or, or advocate and John 16 speaks of how the Spirit will guide us into all truth. He will comfort us. He will guide us. He acts personally. And the second one is that the spiritual gifts that he gives that we read about, for example, in 1 Corinthians 12, are gifts that he gives. They are at his discretion and he distributes them as he determines, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. So the Holy Spirit, first of all, has personhood he can be known he can be pleased he can be grieved he is able to come alongside us and share in our joys and our sorrows he knows us and we can know him the second thing we want to know about the holy spirit uh, is that he is god that is he is god the holy spirit and we know this again because the holy spirit 
uh, has the same qualities as the Father and the Son. Again in John 14 as we read, Jesus says that he will ask the Father and he will send another advocate. And there are two words for another in Greek. The one that's used here means another of the same as the first one. Another of the same stuff, of the same essence. Uh, the Holy Spirit is another of the same stuff, if you like, as Jesus. He hears and sees and knows the mind of Father and Son. He is co-equal with Father and Son. He is one in the sea, is one with them in Trinity. And we know that he is God also because uh, the works that God the works of God are credited to the Holy Spirit. He is active, he was active in creation, he is active in salvation. Uh, we have to be born of the Spirit, as Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, and he will be active in our glorification as well. Uh, Romans 8 verse 11 tells us that it is because the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in believers, is living in us, that our resurrection is guaranteed. He is the, the first fruits of our resurrection. He is our, our sign and say that he is our, our guarantee, if you like, of resurrection. And we know that he is God also because we are told to baptise people into the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And also because the name of God is given directly to the Holy Spirit. For example, in the well-known passage in Jeremiah 31, we are told there that the Lord declares that he will write a new covenant on our hearts, on the hearts of his people. And when that passage is quoted in Hebrews chapter 10, we read, the Holy Spirit also testifies, I will make with them a new covenant. So in other words, what the Lord says, the Spirit says. He is God, one in mind, one in will, one in being with the Father and with the Son. So we must never think of the Holy Spirit as, as an entity, as a, as a force, as an it. He's not a, a distant cousin of God whom we can, we can ignore. He isn't second best to Father and Son. He is a person and he is God, all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing, all-loving. And likewise in turn to be loved and worshipped and served along with Father and Son. We're going to have a, a, a song now, a, a trio, Jude, Susan and Rachel are going to sing My Troubled Soul. And then after that, Rick Hazard's going to come back and lead us in our prayers of intercession. Trials come, I used 
so easily forget to cast your burdens upon the Lord. Jesus cares, He cares for you. Jesus cares, He cares for you. And all your worrying won't help you make it through. Cast all your burdens. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that you are with us, that you've been with us through all of this and Lord, that you'll continue to be with us. We want to pray and thank you as well for the strength that we have within us through your spirit, for our transformed futures and for the incredible hope that we have in you. Lord, I want to pray specifically for our church, for our church family. I ask that you continue to be with every single one of us that you'd comfort us, that you'd be with us, and that we would know your presence with us. We pray specifically for those in treatment for any illness or about to go into or have had treatment delayed perhaps. We ask that that would all go ahead and Lord that through it they would be healed. We pray as well for those who are struggling with mental health issues, whether that's through loneliness or just the struggle uh, and maybe the impact that this pandemic has had on them. We ask that you would heal them, that you would continue to be with them. And Lord, perhaps they would reach out to us as a church so that we could serve you um, by helping them, by bringing your hope to them. I want to pray as well for our church family that sooner rather than later, we'll be able to get together again and worship you. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for everyone involved in putting these services together. Thank you that we have still been able to worship together, even though we've been separated and in our individual homes. We know that we're together when we worship you. And uh, we thank you for that and we pray that you've been glorified by that. Lord Wider, we want to pray for, again, those in, on the front line. We continue to pray for those in the NHS, for those in care homes or anyone who's working on the front line. Lord, we ask that you would protect them and we ask that their skill would continue to turn the tide on this. We pray that you continue to be with them and that, Lord, that they would really know your presence with them. We want to pray as well for our leaders, those in power. We ask that your wisdom would make them make the correct decisions, that they would seek you and seek your wisdom so that they continue to make the right decisions for us, Lord. Lord, as well in the wider world, I want to thank you for the encouraging things we've seen about churches and how churches have been working online and the amount of people who have been engaging. We pray that your good news continues to spread and that more and more people would come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. We ask as well through this the amount of injustice that we've seen, Lord, that perhaps there will be opportunities for us to tackle this and to have more influence on that as a church in your world, that we could continue to look at how uh, your message could help with injustice. Lord, we want to continue to thank you for everything you've done for us. We know that you're in control. We know that no matter what, you have our future secured. And we thank you so much for that and the hope that it gives us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks indeed for uh, that song and to Rick for the prayer. Uh, let's move on then to look at the, the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, some of you are old enough to remember the, the Abba song, Super Trooper. And uh, a Super Trooper is a great big powerful spotlight that would, that would highlight a person on a stage. And uh, in some ways, that's what the work of the Holy Spirit is like, a spotlight ministry. Because the Holy Spirit shines the spotlight, not on himself, but on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
as and what he has done for us as, as our saviour he doesn't put the spotlight on himself but on christ jesus said in chapter 14 verse 16 26 of, of john but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything i have said to you so he comes in the name of jesus he reminds us of everything that jesus taught the holy spirit shines a spotlight on jesus and even more clearly is in chapter 16 of john that we read verses 13 14 he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come he will glorify me now there's the ministry of the holy spirit encapsulated in that short phrase he will glorify me this is always at every moment the work of the holy spirit to glorify the lord jesus christ i i've been in churches where there's been a lot of talk about the holy spirit and uh, the lord jesus hardly got a look in at all barely got a mention you know but any teaching that underplays or undermines which is worse undermines the the lord jesus christ and what he has done for us on the cross that's not the work of the holy spirit that's not the teaching of the holy spirit in fact it's another spirit altogether the spirit of this world for the holy spirit of god will always shine the spotlight on jesus not upon himself the work of the holy spirit as i said at every moment and in every time is always to glorify jesus and we must never forget that and he glorifies jesus in various ways and just going to mention three of those uh, in verses in chapters 14 and 16 of john the holy spirit's ministry first of all is a teaching ministry uh chapter 14 it says he is the spirit of truth and then jesus says in verses 25 and 26 uh, all this i have spoken while still with you but the advocate the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said. The Holy Spirit reminds us of everything that Jesus has said, everything that Jesus has taught. What Jesus taught, the Spirit then caused to be written down in the inspired scriptures of the Old and New Testament. In chapter 16, verse 13, we read, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So as we read and as we study the scriptures, the Old and New Testament, and we open our hearts to the scriptures, then we will hear the voice of the Spirit speaking to us, speaking and applying it into our 21st century world. What the scriptures say God says, God the Holy Spirit says. There is an emphasis in some circles that, that's always looking for a, a new word from the Spirit, a new word of revelation. But what Christ received from the Father, he passed on to the Spirit. And in turn that was passed on to us, caused to be written down. And what Jesus teaches us is in the Scriptures. And so we need to come daily to the word of god we need to ask the spirit to give us an illumination to help us to understand and to apply the scriptures to our lives uh, because it's in, in reading the scriptures that the spirit speaks to us he speaks deeply to our souls he teaches us he rebukes us he corrects us he encourages us in righteousness so that the the person of righteousness uh, will be fully equipped for every good work the holy spirit glorifies jesus in his teaching ministry secondly then the holy spirit's ministry is a pastoral ministry chapter 14 verse 16 i will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever and that title advocate uh, has been variously translated in different translations of the bible as helper as advocate as comforter as counsellor and if you take all of those together they give you an idea of the pastoral work of the holy spirit he is there to help us and to be with us forever but to help us in what way well he's there to help us to become like jesus to fulfill the commands uh, to love god 
with our heart, soul, mind and strength. He's there to help us to love our neighbour as ourselves. He's there to help us to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. The Holy Spirit wants to reproduce in us the very likeness of Jesus. And so he's always seeking to uh, produce within us the, the fruit of what we call the fruit of the Spirit. He's always seeking to produce a likeness of Jesus in love, joy, peace, uh, kindness, kindness, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control to turn us into the very likeness of Jesus. And he does that working from the inside uh, and working by means of the scriptures. Chapter 14, verse 17, uh, But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. The Spirit of Christ in you and me, living in us. And then in chapter 14, verse 23, My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. The Spirit of Christ within us, the Spirit of God the Father within us. To shape Christ's character in us, it's a lifelong task. Uh, and Sometimes we maybe look at ourselves and think, well, you know, the Holy Spirit really has his work cut out with us. Uh, I know I certainly do. It is a lifelong task and that's why we need to live by the Spirit as Paul writes to the Galatians in 5.16. And again in 5.25, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let's not try to run ahead of him. Let's not wander off to the right or left. Let's not drag away behind, but let us keep in step with the Spirit, marching in time with the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus in his pastoral ministry. Then thirdly, the Holy Spirit's ministry is a mission-focused ministry. In chapter 16, verses 8 to 10, uh, we read, When he comes, he will prove the world to be wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because people do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. The word prove here can have the, a range of meaning. It can mean prove or convince or convict or to expose. It's the idea that if you, if you think of a criminal, uh, a criminal, if a criminal has his crime exposed, uh, if he has proved guilty or convicted of a crime well that may happen but he may or may not feel sorry about it he may, may or may not be repentant about it on the other hand he may be he may be convinced of his wrongdoing and be sorry and repentant and this is the work that the holy spirit does he exposes people's sin to them and convicts them of their sin he convicts them of their, their need to, of righteousness, of a saviour, their need of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. He convicts them of the reality of judgment and how they need to turn to Christ. This is the gospel message that Jesus sent his disciples into the world to tell to others and to make disciples of others. The Holy Spirit is the one who guarantees success. He calls us as Christians to service. He equips us with gifts. He sends us out as the Holy Spirit sent out Paul and Barnabas and Antioch. And when we go and when we tell others the gospel, the Holy Spirit is the one who exposes, who proves, who convicts and convinces people of their sin and of their need of a saviour and the need to avoid judgment. Men and women, boys and girls, young people, he is the one who brings them all to bow the knee before Christ Jesus as Saviour and Lord. Yeah, it's a way that Stephen was preaching last week about the parable of the sower. The Holy Spirit is the one who guarantees that some of the seed will land on good soil and produce a harvest of righteousness. We can come to Christ only if the Holy Spirit draws us. We can be born anew only through the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. 
We can enter the kingdom of God only if baptised in the Holy Spirit and united by him with Christ Jesus and baptised into the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus in his mission-focused ministry. You folks, you by ourselves uh, and our own efforts, nobody can fulfil the demands of the Christian faith. But in heaven, we have God the Father who loves us. We also have God the Son who gave his life as an atoning sacrifice to save us. But within us, we have the very Spirit of God. God the Holy Spirit, who is making us like Jesus, shaping us into his likeness, and who is enabling us to live for him. So we must never give in. We must never give up. We can love the Lord with heart, soul, mind and strength. We can love our neighbour as ourselves. We can go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. How? Because of the indwelling and enabling of the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Isn't that fantastic news? Isn't that the best news? That God lives within us. And he makes real to us the very life of God the Father and God the Son in us. So allow him to teach you through his word. Allow him to pastor you, to draw alongside and pastor you and to shape you into the likeness of Jesus. Allow him to equip you and empower you and to use you more and more, to use your gifts to serve him and to tell others the good news. Christ Jesus, uh, to tell others that Christ Jesus is Lord and that he is our saviour. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you more and more so that in you and in your life that Jesus Christ might be glorified. For that's what the Spirit wants to do. Let's respond to this now as we sing our final hymn. Asking the Holy Spirit, the living breath of God, to come and breathe new life into these willing souls of ours if our souls are willing and i hope that they are let's praise god together
as we close our service of worship on this Pentecost Sunday, let's take some of the words that we've just been singing and turn them into a prayer. So let us pray. Living God, we make this our prayer today on this Pentecost Sunday. Come, Holy Spirit, renew our hearts and make us whole. Cause your word to come alive in us. Give us faith for what we cannot see. Give us passion for your purity. Holy Spirit, breathe new life in us and in your church throughout the world. To the glory of King Jesus, in whose wonderful name we pray. During this week, may you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the teaching, the pastoring, and the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Amen.